This is an introduction to cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, all living things take glucose and convert it into a molecule called ATP, which is an energy shuttle molecule. Essentially what happens is that the energy that's locked up in all the bonds of glucose needs to be broken down into smaller units, and those units are ATP molecules. At its best, you can get 36 ATP molecules from one glucose molecule, which is sort of the equivalent of taking a $10 bill and breaking it up into quarters. Before we can talk about cellular respiration, however, we need to kind of take a look at the big picture. The sun produces light energy. When that light energy reaches plants, or other photosynthetic organisms, photosynthesis occurs and glucose is produced. Photosynthesis occurs and glucose is produced. That glucose can be used by the plant whenever it needs it. And the process by which that plant uses the glucose is cellular respiration. The product of cellular respiration is ATP. Now, it isn't just plants that can use the glucose they make uh, to create ATP and therefore be able to perform all kinds of life functions that require that source of energy or that form of energy. Other organisms also take the glucose and in their bodies they convert it to ATP. This is again done by cellular respiration. So both plants and animals do cellular respiration, but only photosynthetic organisms like plants do photosynthesis. So that brings us to another type of organism. Single-celled organisms also need cellular energy. Some can do photosynthesis. For example, there are photosynthetic bacteria. And so they can produce the glucose that they then use uh, in cellular respiration to produce ATP. However, others can't. and both bacteria and other single-celled organisms like yeast. And both bacteria and yeast need to get glucose from another source. They can live off of other organisms. For example, the bacteria might be the bacteria that makes your milk go bad. It's living in the, the milk, uh, using the milk sugar to make its ATP, but some of the byproducts are those nasty tasting uh, chemicals and uh, of course the bacteria itself, which is reproducing and makes you sick when it gets inside of you. Um, yeast is another organism that also requires a source of glucose to make ATP. So both of these organisms also do cellular respiration. And that should make sense because all living things do cellular respiration. In other words, all living things take glucose and break it down to make ATP which can be used for their life functions. When an organism does cellular respiration in the presence of oxygen, we call this aerobic cellular respiration. And the payoff is pretty big. For every glucose molecule that's broken down by cellular respiration, we get 36 ATP. However, if an organism has to break down the glucose in the absence of oxygen, as bacteria do under some conditions and yeast do under some conditions, then the payoff is much smaller. You only get two ATPs worth of energy. Two ATP may be enough for a bacteria cell or a yeast cell to survive, but the energy needs of multicellular organisms like uh, plants and animals is much higher and they only can do aerobic respiration. In the absence of oxygen, not enough ATP gets produced and the end result comes pretty quickly. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at photosynthesis and cellular respiration. The equations you see are actually just summary equations. In other words, neither one of these processes takes place in one step. They're both multi-step processes. We're not going to spend a lot of time looking at photosynthesis, but we will take a look at the steps involved in cellular respiration. But for now, just take a look at both of these equations and see if you notice any sort of an interesting pattern. Did you notice that the reactants of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, 
and water are actually the same as the products of cellular respiration. And did you notice that the products of photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen, are actually the reactants of cellular respiration? The other thing that you should notice is that energy is written into the equation. For photosynthesis to occur, we need sunlight. And the sunlight is what enables the carbon dioxide and water to react and ultimately become glucose and oxygen. In the cellular respiration equation, we don't have sunlight, but we have shown 36 ATP. And we're assuming that this is aerobic cellular respiration, and we know it is because there's oxygen present in the reactants. But you can see that in both cases, we've written energy into the equation. Okay, and these summary equations are just there so that we can recognize what the main reactants are, what the products are. Remember, the, the product that this plant is after when it's doing photosynthesis is glucose. Oxygen is just a byproduct, and we're lucky enough to have it because we actually need that oxygen to burn the glucose. Photosynthesis, as its name implies, is a synthesis series of reactions. In this case, we're making something larger from smaller subcomponents. We start with the very small molecules of carbon dioxide and water, and we make a relatively large molecule here when we make glucose. Cellular respiration is not a synthesis reaction. It's actually a combustion reaction where we burn something, in this case glucose, in the presence of oxygen and we produce carbon dioxide and water. The byproduct is ATP. And the way that this combustion is different than the combustion that takes place when you just take some sugar and you burn it in a, in a teaspoon is that when you do that you get a bunch of carbon and smoke and heat and light being given off and all that energy that's in the glucose bonds is wasted. Uh, with cellular respiration that energy is much more carefully controlled and it's controlled in such a way that the bond energy of glucose ends up in the bonds of ATP and we know that there's no, no light there's minimal heat, there's certainly no flames when this occurs inside of our own cells, inside of our bodies. Okay, so this is just kind of an overview of cellular respiration, why it's happening, the big picture as to how that glucose ends up getting to the point where it can actually be the source of energy for all living things. In the next videos, we'll take a look at the step-by-step -step process of cellular respiration.